Today we're going to be answering a question that's come up quite a lot on videos where I've used a small purpose-built UPS to power Raspberry Pi. And that is whether you could just use a power bank instead. The UPS hats or shields that I've used in previous videos are these two. The first one, that I used in my mini desktop case build, costs around $35 to $40 without batteries. It takes two 18650 lithium ion cells and uses these to provide power through three USB ports on the front and to inject power to the power through the GPO opens. It's also got an I2C bus which transmits a range of data to the power, like whether it's plugged in or what the battery capacity is, and you can also get your power to safely shut down when the battery voltage drops below a certain limit. The second is the PowerSugar 3 Plus, which I used in my mini server rack build. This one costs around $50 and comes with an included 5000 mAh battery pack. This has largely the same features as the other UPS. It doesn't have any USB ports on the front, but it does have a better interface. The settings can all be adjusted and managed through a web dashboard rather than through Python scripts. And I also found it to be a lot more stable and reliable. So the main question is, could you use a power bank to power a Raspberry Pi? And then if you can, why would you use one of these instead? Power banks are often a lot cheaper or have significantly higher battery capacity. So to find out if we can use a power bank, I've got two extremes here. The first is a cheap $15 power bank, which has a 6000 mAh battery and two USB type A ports. And the second is the Shark Geek Storm 2. This is a $220 power bank, which has a 25,600 mAh battery and has a range of USB ports including USB-A and Type-C ports that support power delivery. Shargeek sent me the Storm 2 to try out and share with you, so I thought it would be a good device to do a comparison against. You may have already seen one of their eye-catching power banks online, with a cyberpunk style transparent case. This leaves the batteries and PCB visible. But apart from stylish design, they also offer great performance and a host of features, which we'll take a look at during the comparison. The main issue I see when people ask whether they can just use a power bank is that they're generally asking because it's an easy way to save money. A $20 power bank is obviously half the price of a $40 UPS, and you can still use it to power or charge other devices as well. The issue is that most of these cheap power banks often only have USB-A ports, and only support a little over 2 amps, or about 10 watts. If you're familiar with the official Pi's power supply, this is a 3 amp or 15 watt USB-C supply. Now this probably isn't going to be an issue if you're running a bare bones power with no connected drives or peripherals, but it will likely be a problem if you're trying to power a full desktop setup like this. This has an SSD, an OLED display, a PWM fan, and has a wireless mouse and keyboard receiver plugged into it. So let's try powering the power by itself with the first power bank. So that is booted up and it doesn't seem to have any issues. I can open up applications which puts the load onto the CPU, and we don't get any under voltage warnings coming from the power. I put my USB power meter onto it and found that it was drawing a little under half an amp when on the desktop. Next let's try powering the power in my desktop case setup. The first time I tried to boot it up, it did look like it was going to start up. It loaded the stats display script, but then locked up. I tried it again a few times and it did eventually boot up, but it instantly came up with a low power warning. The little lightning bolt warning stays up almost continuously, and the Pi is clearly running at reduced performance. It's very laggy even just moving windows around. With my power meter connected, it looks like the Pi uses a maximum of around 1.4 amps when booting up, and then stabilizes under 1 amp when on the desktop. At 1 amp we're still well below the 2 amp rating of the power bank, so it should be able to keep up with the voltage, but it just doesn't. So now let's try powering it with the Storm 2. The Storm 2's USB-A port can do 18 watts, so we should be able to power the Pi from that port without any issues but it also has two USB Type-C ports which both support power delivery. The one marked C1 can draw up to 100 watts and the one marked C2 can do up to 30 watts. To start I'm going to use the Storm 2's included cable to power the Pi using the lower powered USB-C port. 
This time the pie is booted up and is running without any warnings. It's also a lot more responsive when opening up applications, so it doesn't seem to be performance limited. On the Storm 2's display, we can see that it's drawing a little over 4 watts. We've still got a lot of capacity available, so let's try hook up the portable monitor to the Storm 2 as well, so that our whole setup is running from the power bank. With the monitor added, we're now drawing a little over 5 watts on the monitor's port and a little under 5 watts on the PAS port, with the combination being just over 10 watts. The Storm 2 has a 25,600 mAh battery, or more appropriately, 93.5 watt hours made up of 8 lithium ion cells. So we could power this portable setup, including the monitor, for around 9 hours. Shargeek chose 93.5 watt hours as most airlines have a limit of 100 watt hours for power banks, so it has a high capacity but you could still travel with it. The onboard controller has a built in battery protection system, which includes over or under voltage protection, short circuit protection, and protection against extreme temperatures. The lithium ion cells are manufactured by Samsung, and the housing is V Nord fireproof, so they've taken safety seriously when designing it. Another interesting feature of the Storm 2 is the DC barrel jack next to the USB ports. This can be used as either an input or an output, and its voltage is adjustable through the display. So if we set it to 12 volts, we can even power my whole Turing Pi 2 build. We can also plug the monitor into it, drawing a total of 17 watts. So we could power this setup of 4 network pies in a fanned enclosure and a portable monitor for over 5 hours. Once the battery is drained, Shaggy claimed that you can fully recharge the Storm 2 in 1.5 hours. I tested this by fully draining it and then recharging it using my USB-C adapter from my MacBook. This supports up to 140 watts. It charged up to 80% in an hour and reached 100% after 1 hour and 35 minutes. So clearly it is possible to power a Raspberry Pi with a power bank, and even add additional peripherals like a portable display. So does this mean that a power bank would be a better choice? Well this is where it depends what you want to do with it, because a UPS and a power bank have similar features but aren't really the same thing. A power bank is great to make your Raspberry Pi setup portable for a period of time, but this is not why we use a UPS. A UPS is there to ensure that your Pi stays running through minor power interruptions, and in the event of an extended interruption, it gives the Pi an opportunity to safely shut down. There are two important features that make a UPS different to a power bank. The first is that the UPS is designed to run for long periods of time with power on, and batteries don't like being fully charged for long periods of time. So most good quality UPSs will have a feature to limit the maximum charge and discharge level of the connected batteries. They'll then only charge or discharge the battery between these limits. This protects the battery and prolongs its life. They also usually direct power from the supplier to the load once the battery is full, so that you're not consistently drawing power from the batteries, again to prolong their life. The second is something I've mentioned previously, and that's that they're able to tell the Pi to safely shut down when the battery is running low. This protects your Pi and whatever you had running on it in the event of a longer power outage, something that a power bank won't do either. So it really depends on what you're wanting to do with your Pi. If you're connecting batteries to it to keep it running through a power outage, then a UPS is the correct choice. But if you're wanting to make your setup portable, then a good quality power bank is the correct choice, and you'll be able to use it to power other things as well. Just make sure that your power bank is able to meet the power requirements of the Pi. You'll generally be okay with any power bank that can supply 3 amps through at least one of its ports, most likely a USB-C port. Sharkeek have a range of good quality power banks available on their web store or on Amazon. The Storm 2 sells for $229 on their website. This is obviously a lot of money for a power bank, but you're getting a solid set of features and a quality product that'll likely last for a number of years. Not many power banks can even support power delivery, never mind doing it at up to 100 watts, 
and the inclusion of the DC power output makes it quite versatile. You could probably power small laptops or mini computers directly from this port, since they usually take an 18 volt input. Shargeek even offer a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not happy with your Storm 2. So I hope this video has answered some of your questions that you may have had about powering your power with a power bank or UPS. If you've got any other questions on either of these power supplies, leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to answer it. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.